Hello and welcome to another Construct 3 tutorial. In this tutorial series, we are going to create this little swim mechanic. We have a, a very typical platform kind of movement, run, jump, and idle. And then we have our water down here. We have a few things going on, so I'll just show you. First thing I think you probably notice is that uh, we made a splash. So there are some effects. There's also the mechanic of swimming. And we're going to do this in states. And you see when I get out of the water, we go back to our uh, other state, which is us on land. But in the water, we have, like I said, uh, some effects, some splash, the waves of the water. And he also has little air bubbles coming out and there's a little warp effect going on while he's in the water. So some pretty cool looking stuff, I think. So let's start a new project. I'm going to call this uh, swimming. Call yours whatever you want. As for our viewport size, I'm gonna go 640 by 360. You know, I like to make these pretty small. I think it helps us concentrate more on the mechanic and I'm not real good at art anyways. Let's go with a landscape orientation and start with an event sheet and check that box, optimize for pixel art, and create that. First things first, I want to get this display viewport size over here, our 640 by 360. I'm gonna highlight that, Control C to copy, and then click anywhere on the layout to bring up the layout properties. And up here in the size, I'm going to highlight that and paste. Hit enter, and now we have a layout that is the same size as our viewport. Another thing I want to establish right off the bat is, although we did give our project a name, you can see it up here, we have not saved this. So let's go ahead and make sure that we are saving. All right, before we get too far into this, I want to make sure that I explain what is going to happen. In the first couple of videos, we are going to create the mechanic of our player running and jumping on land and swimming in water. This can all be done with the free version of Construct 3. We are well within the event limit and we will pile everything up on just two layers. However, when we get into the later videos, we are going to go through some of the effects. Each effect is going to have to be on its own layer. The free version allows for two layers, but we are going to need each effect on its own layer. Plus, we're going to have to have the player on a separate layer all by itself. So that's at least three layers. And once we get to those videos, we will make actually more layers just to make things organized. So for now, the mechanic itself can be done completely in the free version, while the effects later on will require the full version of Construct 3. Okay, I am going to start out by importing some sprites. I chose this fox sprite made by JV Inaguas or Harvet Fox 96 but I also modified these sprites to fit this project. I have provided in a link down in the description of each of these videos. Go ahead and download those. Place them in a folder somewhere where you can access them on your computer. And once you've done that, double click on the layout Let's scroll down to Sprite and let's insert that. Now we can go up here to this folder icon and it says load image from file. And here I have all the assets I have provided in that link. You should have a folder for idle, jump, run, and swim. So if we go into idle, it's just the one Sprite. Let's open that. And I'm gonna zoom in here. With the origin tool selected, I'm going to place the origin in the bottom middle. You can do that with your keypad by pressing two. If you don't have a keypad on your keyboard, just right click on origin over here on the top left, go to quick assign and bottom. That'll put it in the bottom middle. Let's make sure that our collision box is not all crazy like it is. Right click on any of these nodes and set to bounding box. And then we can change the name of the animation to idle. Make sure that your speed is zero uh, loops not turned on, and we should be good to go with the idle animation. I'm going to right click on the animations panel over here and add an animation and go back over to our folder. 
and navigate to the jump folder. Click on that, let's open it. Do the same thing here. Let's set this to bounding box. Make sure our origin is in the bottom middle. And let's rename this jump. Right click and add another animation. Go to our folder, navigate to run. There's two frames in this one. You can control click both of them to select both of them and open. And then put our origin in the bottom middle and then our bounding box set to bounding box. And our second frame is kind of messed up too. And we could just go up here and do the same thing, but I'm gonna go back to our first frame where we have everything set. And I'm going to right click on one of these nodes and say apply to whole animation. And the same thing with the origin. I want to right click and apply to whole animation. Now, both frames are exactly the same. Let's rename this, run, and then right click and add an animation, go to our folder, navigate to swim, and there are three frames. Select all three of those, open them, and let's put the origin in the bottom middle. We can come over here, right click, and apply to whole animation. And then our bounding box, let's right click, set to bounding box, right click it again, and apply to whole animation. Let's rename this, swim. So for our swim animation, for the speed, let's make that a six. And if we click loop, we can preview this. So that's our swim animation. However, we don't need the loop actually checked for in game. So I'm gonna uncheck that. And then let's go to our run animation. And I'm going to bump the speed up to 10. And I will click the loop on this one. And then we can preview that. And there's our run animation. Okay, let's exit out of that. And with our little guy still selected, let's rename this player. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little and I'm going to double click somewhere in the layout to bring up our object type window again and scroll down, get us another sprite, insert it. Come up here to resize and I'm gonna say 16 by 16 and I'm gonna get the origin tool and put it in the bottom left. Now we can grab our paint bucket tool. I'm gonna go with a nice green color and I'm gonna go to our HSL, drop that saturation down. So I'm gonna go with something like that. You can make yours whatever color you want. This is gonna be our ground sprite and I'm going to just fill this in with our paint bucket tool. Exit out. With that selected, let's rename this ground. And also, since we have it selected, over here in the left properties panel, I'm going to add a behavior to our ground sprite, add new behavior, and pick solid. Okay, uh, we can move this anywhere we want, but I want a little bit more constraint when placing things. So uh, if we click anywhere on the layout, just one single click gives our layout properties. And on grid size, I'm gonna change that to 16 comma 16. And then I'm going to turn on snap to grid. Now we are constrained to every 16 pixels. We just place this about one third of the way up from the bottom and drag it all the way across the screen and then take our little character and move him down towards the ground so that his feet are on the ground. And now we can select our player sprite and go over here in its properties and edit behaviors, add a new behavior, scroll down to platform, add that. We can exit out of that. And I'm just going to play this real quick. So there is our scene. We have a jump. I'm using the arrow keys, the default controls. Uh, a little, little crazy for me. I'll make this full screen. We have a few issues going on. Uh, one, we need to adjust our values in our platform. And also, we have this scaling issue going on. So let's exit out of that. If we click on our project folder, that's the very topmost folder in our project panel. It'll bring up the properties for our project. 
and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Under display, we have full screen mode. Right now, because we checked that optimize for pixel art option on the project setup screen, it is by default set to letterbox integer scale, but I want it to scale no matter how big the window is. So we'll just pick letterbox scale. And then if we play, it takes up the full window. We no longer have black empty screen around it. Okay, this is a good time to save. Make sure that you save as often as you can think about it. So let's change some of these values. Make sure that the player sprite is selected. And over here in the properties under the behaviors, we have the platform behavior. I'm gonna drop the max speed down to 200 and I'm gonna up the acceleration to 2000. I'll leave deceleration where it is. Uh, jump strength, let's say 400, and let's test that out. So with our arrow keys, uh, a lot better fluid motion going on here. I like that a lot better. Okay. One last thing for our platform behavior before we move on. Let's uncheck default controls. And now we can start setting up our own custom controls. So we can double click on the layout again and scroll down towards the bottom under input. We have keyboard. Let's insert that. Let's go over to the event sheet and let's add an event grab our keyboard and on key is down and we will click to choose. I'm going to go with a hit done. And then let's add an action, go into our player and scroll down to the platform behavior at the bottom of it. We have simulate control and that is going to be left. So now as long as our a is down, it will push us to the left. Click and highlight this entire block of code. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Go into this keyboard event here. Double click to go in and change that A to a D. And let's double click on our platform action and change left to right. Now let's add another event, go into our keyboard, and this time I want on key pressed. And we will choose the, I'm going to go with the W key for jumping. Add an action, get our player, scroll down to our platform behavior, simulate control, and choose jump. Okay, let's play that. Now we have control with our WAD keys instead of the arrow keys. I'm going to save real quick. And then I'm going to stop this video here. And in the next video, we will get started on the states for our player to determine what controls our player has when they're on land versus in the water. That's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.